Are you constantly searching for your notes and don't know where they are? As you grow in PhD, your document is going to be more complex and there's more needs for cross-referencing. That is why this is the video for you to watch how I use OneNote to organize my research. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as a PhD to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. If you haven't already yet, please make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss anything from this highly practical platform for your PhD. I know there are many online tutorials on OneNote, but I see the value of giving my experience of how I use OneNote for PhD project organization. Let's just take a look at how OneNote is like on the computer. Look at the top ribbon of OneNote. Everything is just like Microsoft Word. Everyone would think it is really intuitive to begin using OneNote. On the right side, you can see there are to-do lists that you can create and you can check off items on the page. So it's also handy when you have a lab meeting and you have several things to do, you can quickly create a to-do list on the left, you have organization of the notebook and within each notebook, you have many folders. Next to the folders on the right, you have a column of pages and you could make these pages as sub pages by right clicking and making it sub page. It's a visual way to understand which sections of the pages that you are going to look into. I was learning programming online. I have each page as each class I will screen capture any important slides and I will write my own notes below it. And it's handy to have this organization so that I can go back to my folders of programming and I can go through exactly the weeks and different chapters of the course. You can imagine these pages could represent different meetings of the lab and I could send out these texts by copying and pasting from OneNote to an email. And you could imagine using this for webinars or Zoom meeting when someone sends you um, a text and you need to quickly copy and paste some information, OneNote is a handy place for it too. Another really popular function of OneNote is perhaps the screenshots function. When you're navigating the internet, there are a lot of pieces of puzzle that you need to put together. I could screenshot a funding or copy and paste some text from one source and I can paste the link. And imagine if you have many pages of funding that you need to screen through scholarship, manuscript. This is the place that you can quickly organize a lot of information that is on the internet. This is one of the biggest reasons I enjoy my experience using OneNote. Sometimes I just have random thoughts about my experiment or I have some idea from reading an article and I want to organize it somewhere. It will be difficult if I go back to Word files and organize this note with the thinking that I will have memory on where I saved it the next day. By the way, if you want organization tips on folders and file system, I have a video just here for you. Back to OneNote. It's a place that you can feel free to write random thoughts and it keeps every version on the page. So you will know if suddenly your PC gives you a blue screen, which happened to my Microsoft window a lot, if anyone know why. But if OneNote saving is on the cloud, you can be sure that you have that written work safely saved in the cloud. So I typically go on OneNote to write all my draft zero. If you don't know what is a draft zero, this is the video about writing for you to look at. Sometimes you just want to capture your instant thought and without overthinking where to put it and which document, that's the place for it. Sometimes I just need to do a calculation and make a simple table to organize my thought. And in OneNote, using a tab button, you can create another column, another column, and you can create a table in a really intuitive manner. 
So it helps my thought to be captured at the moment. And of course, if you love organization, you have folders and pages systems that you can have different sub pages to make it look really organized and you can be sure to search everything you did. And did I say search? Because when you go back to two years ago, four years ago, when you first started PhD, you will have problem remembering where the file saved. And on OneNote, you can use the search button and search the keywords that you have put for each file. So everything will be there and will never be lost. Lucy has a recent video about how she used Evernote. I hope you will check out her video because she talked about how she organized her introduction writing using similar note-taking method. Evernote and OneNote, to me, they are similar and I have never tried Evernote. So whichever way works for you, please do it. But I think online note-taking has a great advantage over paper note-taking because you can search a lot faster and you can recover everything from the past. And also when you move home, you're not stuck with this heavy stack of notes that you need to bring with you when you start a next position as a postdoc. OneNote is famous for its shopping list because you can synchronize on your computer and you can see it on your mobile phone or iPad. And I will also say this is a handy feature for you as a researcher because that means if you go to the lab and you have a few reagents that you want to make and you have a checklist of how many milligram and how many uh, gram of chemical, you can do the check button and you will be like shopping in groceries for your laboratory. So to me, that's really handy even in the lab. And of course, you can use to-do list to buy groceries. That's allowed. I would like to cover what I have not enjoyed in OneNote because I think the features are not as good as the other application. The first is the inking application. Yes, OneNote also have a platform you can write and draw diagrams, but I don't like it because it doesn't stay in place where I highlighted the text when you move by adding a sentence, the highlighter doesn't stick with what the feature that you're trying to highlight to. So it gets frustrating when I try to use OneNote for inking and highlighting. I do have an app that I'd like to use, it's called GoodNotes, but it is on iPad for inking and highlighting. Or you can use PDF professional version uh, PDF exchange, they also allow you to highlight PDFs. But for now in OneNote, I just use bold fonts and highlighting in yellow in terms of the text operation. Also, OneNote has a recording voice for notes taking. I've never explored that. Uh, my biggest concern is the free space on OneNote. So I would be really concerned. It could be uh, chewing up all the space that I need. So that's something I haven't explored very far with note taking. I also think OneNote is having a big disadvantage on collaboration. For example, if I have a project and I want the checklist to be checked off with my teammate, yes, OneNote has a feature that you can share with someone that you work with, but they will have access to the whole notebook. And if you have used OneNote, you know one notebook can contain many folders of different courses, different subjects, and then different pages can contain the list that you really want to share. So to me, that's a lot of work to share one notebook to someone. I will have concern that I am sharing too much because it's a lot of information or it will be clumsy to make one notebook just for one task. So if you work with someone in a collaborative project and you're really working on like multi-level uh, collaboration, then I think OneNote can be a good choice. I personally like Trello a lot more because the size is smaller and it's also a note taking tool with check boxes. I have made a video here for project management, so please check that out. I think OneNote to me, the way I use it to this day now, I have used it for maybe the past four years. Everything in here, if I need to write down my ideas of videos or experiment or manuscript, that will be the place I go to. And that saved me from opening new folders. 
So with that, I hope this is a nice practical tips for you that you can try out. Or if you already use OneNote, if I did a good job explaining this, please share my video to your coworkers so that they will know this too. Thank you for tuning in. Until the next time, 